that's going to be quite a mental barrier for them to kind of overcome, right? Yeah, I, I think the only thing that could be a little bit of a worry if Rooster do get too cocky themselves, because I think some of the time they take some pretty heavy risks, especially when they do consider themselves the better team, which I think going into this series, they definitely would do. I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't. But you look at the teams that they're coming up against and they're able to beat the likes of Paradox, compete versus the likes of Order, beat Avant, beat Order as well. Like They, they are one of the teams that are challenging to be like a, a top four team within the region. Like Mitch spoke about how he thinks they're on the sort of brink of it with Chiefs. But if anything, if we're looking at what has been done by these two teams, you, you almost have to put Rooster above Chiefs because Chiefs are brand new. Like I think there's definitely the potential that Chiefs could go on to do more. But at the same time, if you're looking at actual results and actual statistics, Rooster are one of the teams that should be looking to get into the playoffs. So sure, they had the toughest possible opponent for the first match and they did okay. It wasn't amazing, but they did all right. Now they come up against a team who have just been, well, almost crushed mentally. I would say this is theirs to lose now. I have to agree with you on that, right? And, and again, Rooster, got to bear in mind, they placed second in the ANZ champs, right? They took a map of Renegades earlier on. Before that, in the DreamHack, I think it was Open Summer. They were also able to take down the likes of Navan and even Order, if memory serves me right. So yeah, I, I'm going to actually stick by the fact that Rooster right now they can kind of tentatively be placed as the fourth best team in the region. Of course, closely followed by mm. by Chiefs and maybe a couple of other teams here. A, a, a thought stuck my uh, my mind, struck my mind, Tom. Uh, how fitting would it be for Dick Stacy to join Rooster? But he's playing Valorant right now. But it would be it would be perfect, wouldn't it? Just for the memes. I, I think we'd all lose our careers within a, a very very short space of time if if that was combined. Especially if they some if they managed to like get to the point where they could get to the major. That's <laughs> it. Like stickers would have to be removed because the amount of things that were created. Off just the back of Dick Stacy's sticker alone, I, it would be atrocious. Like the big dick energy is has <laughs> has come out like a million times. Or like the amount of times I've seen that on AKs when walking around, you pick it up and you go, "Oh, for God's sake!" You can't but the keep thing is, you know this. what? Like we we talk about as a joke about us. I kind of miss those days where like the biggest post on Reddit or like the most tweeted about. Um, tweet like counter-strike tweet was about dick stacy's stickers and now you go to reddit or like twitter the past couple of days yeah and that's it's, true. it's like everything's on fire everything's fine i don't even have a cup around you but everything's fine here it's uh it, it's a grim time and it's nice to kind of reminisce about some of the the more uh fun albeit a little bit you know like spicy things do you know, we do you know what's deal interesting with. though that uh -huh. this is actually where a lot of coaches uh at sit during the match <laughs> Or actually, I don't think so. Like you don't, you can't really see much of the map from here. I don't know. I, I feel like with the right cab, you probably could. <laughs> All right. So we're just uh, hearing words from the from the admins that uh, a player is yet to connect. So hopefully, we should be starting off with the game real, real, real quickly. But yeah, it is going. It is going to be nuke. Uh, and if I'm not very much mistaken, you pick a map, your opponents get to choose a side. And I'm assuming Roos is going to be starting off on the CT side here, unless I'm unless they want to do something a little bit more crazy. And looking at the way they played against Renegades yesterday, one thing I noticed was they were not afraid. And I think that is something no. which Ground Zero uh, showed. Like I mean, they showed a complete opposite rather, where when they were nine one up, then it was nine six up. They started playing on that CT side. They started playing not to win, but rather not to sorry they didn't start playing to win they played not to lose and i think that just broke them like we saw earlier in that game how many bomb plants how many times did they go for the save and when you have such a big lead initially maybe that's a that's a time when you go for some of these more aggressive yolo plays and again i'm not talking about burn just running in alone like an absolute madman but more being you know a, a little bit more of control aggression and on that note we're going to be going live and it is going to be Rooster starting on the CD side. None of them have a single picture up. I don't think they've given PGL that picture. I couldn't find any of the pictures on HLTV as well. They're edgy. Which, they're edgy. They're edgy, aren't they? It, it's kind of disappointing. They're mysterious. Look at 2D's picture. How magnificent is that? Either that or they just sent in pictures that could never be used, if, if, if you know what I mean. You know, they are Team Rooster. There's some connotations there. Some no, chickens. never mind. We're going to go move in <laughs> ADK already having to retreat now it is worth mentioning 
Ground Zero did have an incredible start to their T side. So we know that they can do it on the T side. Them starting on this side of the map might actually be a blessing in disguise. They're actually going to go diving up the ladder. They want to hunt down Netic, and that's exactly what they're going to do. It is Llamas, oh, Noobster. No. They've all combined. And while ADK is the last man standing. That was such a big mistake. They give up ramp, and uh, I think it was... I think it was ASAP, who was just kind of like jumping around towards uh, like just outside of hell. And he just made a footstep and immediately ground zero, wasting no time, just pouncing on him. And there we go. It is going to be the final player to fall. Almost a flawless run from ground zero. Basically given all the map control they want, holding W and just completely dismantling that CD side defense from Rooster. So, you know what? For ground zero, off to a great start. The only uh, scary thing being, this is what we saw from them on their... Uh, on their new pick in the previous game as well. Great start, incredible lead, and it all fell apart. Yeah, I, I guess the thing is, it's very easy to look at the negatives of that, but if they can sort of rectify some of the mistakes, have a few extra adaptations, I, I don't think they're completely out of this map. The next one, I'm, I'm a little bit more worried for them. Uh, this round already, they're going to go barreling in. And Netic, he wants some revenge. What? They pressured him in the last round. They're pressuring him here again. And they're just handing kills to this one man. It is all falling apart. Never mind, but I, I take it back. Just... Take it back, yeah. <sighs> he gets three kills on top of Hut. And now Noobster will be found out by Chelios. And that is, I mean, it's a huge run from Netic. Getting 3k with a Deagle, but... That should not be the case. There were just two players on upper bomb side that found a first kill, and Netic not just getting the first two kills, not getting traded, staying alive, and by that time the reinforcements had arrived. Like, how is he allowed to get two kills and get away with it? That is such a mistake from ground zero. And yeah, they win the pistol run very convincingly, and they get just completely crapped on in the in the anti-eco. Well, it was a forced buy, but still, that should be happening. And I just want to touch on one quick thing as well. Chelios, he was very quiet yesterday in the series in the Renegades. If he shows up here yeah. today, it could be a very different story altogether. Well, yeah, he's probably my prime example of players that are going to play purely off confidence. It's a very common trait for AWPers, let's be real. Like, if you're feeling confident, you play better. I, I, <laughs> I think we see that with maybe every single AWPer ever in the history of Counter-Strike. So... Yeah, and when I saw him play versus Mako the day before in ESCA, he was like that. Maybe too much, like far too much, but he was still fragging quite heavily, even making some of these ludicrous plays. This round, though, it's it's looking doable. Mako still has a rifle. Llamas, that's an easy kill. He's managed to sneak him from behind. Okay, a little bit of extra damage, and because of that, it falls straight into the hands of Netic. It's left into the 1v1. Now, this is a long rotation. I don't know if this will be expected. ADK has gone all the way around the outside, around the outside, and oh, just Ooh. about going to get himself the final kill. Of course, he's the true edge master with a name that doesn't match up, but, you know, it works out for Rooster. It does indeed, and uh, yeah, that got a little expensive, and I would have liked... I, I forget who it was, the player with the Galil who was outside. He... Yeah, it was Danny. Danny Gangster. And he did get, well, not a kill per se, but he did figure, catch, uh, he did, you know, force a burn to drop down and die uh, to gravity. But I feel like, you know, that sort of aggression, I like it. But he wanted to be helped out by, by your teammates. Like, once he went for that full fight, that full commit on towards the players coming up top of Red Rock, you know, you want to be a little bit more, a uh, little bit more passive, have a have an escape route, at least have a teammate nearby to flash you or something. As we do have Chelios, he's got the big green out, Tom. So we're going to farm a few players here. Danny spots out the shadow. And it's going to be ASAP who's going to save his teammate. I'll be honest, Blair. Your hopes for the Roosters being passive, I, I think, are going to fall on deaf ears, to say the least. <laughs> as, we, as we just did. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that couldn't have happened at a better time. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Two players. No, it wasn't amazing. <laughs> Uh, they've got an orb. Noobs just managed to get an AWP. Netic. Oh, is he going to be able to deny the plant? Interesting that the man with the orb was the one planting the bomb, but you know what? It worked. They've got themselves an after plant position. ASAP to try and rotate in. And Netic has a crossfire with him. Now, this movement is actually going to give the position away. The door being opened helps them out significantly. Now, they don't have much utility left to force Noobster off the angle. They've utilized their final smoke and a single flashbang is all they have. Unfortunately, Noobster is not going to land any of the shots. So 
They get away with it again, uh, but that, that's all I can really put it down to. They got away with it. It wasn't a pretty round, although I enjoyed it. I'm sure you didn't. And 3-1 uh, yeah, no. still. I, 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 I do enjoy watching chaotic rounds. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I enjoy it at well, the same time I'm punching you my face. You live chaotic rounds. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, deep down inside, like a part of me dies. At this point, I don't have anything <laughs> remaining. That was a round where Ground Zero did barely invest in anything, just a couple of deagles, I feel I feel like. They got a, even got a kill with the Glock. So they're going to be very happy with that. Taking away three guns, three rifles, um, getting the bomb down, that's a massive, massive round considering the investment they had. And now, aggression. Chelios with the AWP towards Outer Yard, not going to find anything. All the T's are setting up by the looks of it for the upper nade on top of Hut. And they're gonna do just five points of damage. That's unfortunate. And oh, Chelios, he spots the players. Oh, oh, there you go. My time to shine. And Llamas just completely, utterly smacks him down. Yeah, as I said, I, I feel like the Roosters have become a team now that like people within this region are going to be keeping an eye on. It, it seems like they've got some fans in the chat, that's for sure. But I think that if you are ground zero, you're going to have watched some of these demos. You're going to be expecting aggression, maybe not a second player. <laughs> he can do it, Danny G. Finally going to be put down, but that's enough. That's all he needed. A two for one trade. He puts his team back in an even scenario. Burn even tagged down a little bit as well. And it, it almost seems like that they've heard us talking from the last moment going, oh, you're, you're saying, Burn, are you okay? Is too aggressive. Well, just you wait, Blair. I won't lie. I mean, it, there is something fun about, like, there's a reason I enjoy watching Tyler because of how absolutely insane they are uh, with, with the aggression. But at the same time, they still manage to somehow bring it back and win rounds, which is so very impressive. Or mental, I don't even know which word to use there. But here we go, 2v2, Nuxer alive on four points of health. Lace, 71. He has been the player to watch for ground zero, even in that loss. So he's going to be instrumental here if they want to clutch this one out. There's still have time to work with your CTs. Both the T's playing together inside the T lobby. The op shot missed by Nuxer. Mm. That's a huge miss because now he's left alone. Four points of health. Do they have any utility? They have an incendiary, and he's going to be coming around from Squeaky. Attention diverted in his direction, and he's not going to have time to go for the fast scope. And it is going to be ASAP getting the kill, saving his teammate, and picking up an AWP. Expensive rounds for Rooster, but they do maintain that 3-1, 4-1 lead. Do you want to hear an interesting stat, Blair? Go on. Rooster have already had more successful retakes than both teams managed to retake on Nuke in the first series. There we go, 2 0 Rooster, like you guys call it. <laughs> That's a really depressing stat when it, we're in round it, five. It is. It is. It is. There was one defusal in that nuke in the, the last series, oh, and it God. wasn't for it wasn't for ground zero. So uh, yeah, that doesn't make the stats any better. They really struggled in their retakes, and it was something that we actually had when we had the uh, interview with Moot. He basically just said, yeah, when we got into 3v3 positions, like we were always able to hold. I don't necessarily think that it was because they were in necessarily 3v3s. I think it's because they were in afterplants. And the second they got into those positions, it, it just seemed like Ground Zero had nothing. And and the, the interesting thing is as well, is Ground Zero were really good on the T side. So it's not even like they couldn't entry into sites. In fact, they were fantastic at that. So I don't actually know what it was. Maybe just they, they hear the bomb ticket and they go, Oh, no, I don't want to go near that. Like, it, it, it was just weird. I, I I don't know what happened to them, but something changed. Nice entry, though, for Lays. As you mentioned, he's the man to watch, the player that we need to keep an eye on, the youngster who recently joined this team. And, well, he's cooked a little bit. That sound cue has actually given his position away. Llamas, though, seems to have his back. And, well, looking like we might have another afterplant here. Ooh, Chelios, though. Calm and patient, waiting for the smoke to dissipate. Noobs are timing, not working out from his teammate. Had a smoke, they could have used it a little bit earlier. And now ASAP trying to be cheeky, trying to get the timing right. But Lairs still holding on. They haven't spotted him out, using the smoke perfectly. Lairs right below him. And ASAP, he just pulled off a magic trick, which just might have won them the round. It was a 5v4, they had control of the bomb site. And now 2v2, bomb yet to be planted. And look at the rotation from the other CT. It looks like. Looks like Chelios expecting them to head over towards lower, but no, bomb will be planted. And now ASAP, he's got a lot of work to do, but looking at how low they oh, are, that's so with smart. a cheeky angle, that is so smart. And Chelios now with the AWP, this is not looking very likely, Tom. He gets away with that. 
Okay, I don't know how for the start he gets up the vent, and I don't know how he doesn't hit that shot. That looked bang on, but I guess he must have been moving a little bit when he took it, so uh, that's going to be painful. I think it whiffed it just by, like, a millimeter there. Oh. How low were they, Tom? Like, you could have just literally just taken out his USB and just won that round. Whew. That ought to suck, but... Rooster, they're a team who don't, uh, you know, really go for these saving things that uh, some teams do. They're going to be going for the force by Chelios once more with the AWP, M4 for ADK, and the rest of them, it's going to be Deagles and a bit of armor and uh, it's, a, it's a tad bit of utility. Yeah, this is where we can start seeing rounds are really, I was going to say build into this one, but uh, that, that's not the best of starts. Obviously, it's only a Mac 10 It was Maker pretty much going for one of those really aggressive pushes to try and maneuver some of these players around like force them into different angles that they don't necessarily want to be taking unfortunately he doesn't actually get to keep the space so it doesn't really have that much value especially when you consider that the rest of the team had taken ramp control the idea was probably to try and split into the b site instead they've had to make other plans now these plans aren't necessarily bad they've been able to get control of hell but with the cts mostly holding on the a site I feel like they should be aware that they've given up heaven, although by the looks of it, they aren't. They haven't indeed. As Lama's going to be leading the charge, he didn't spot anyone out, but finds one. Netic's going to fall. Then he's immediately following up with a frag of his own, and yeah, this round should be pretty much done. Chelsea and ADK, the two players with the rifles, and they should be just looking for the save here. They get the one kill. That's okay. For ground zero, though, it's a very important round to win, and they win it by... Well, at least for now, they've only lost one player, and they need to start building up a little bit of, a, of an economy here. But for Rooster, uh, it's a bit of a pickle, Tom. They have to go for an eco here. Anetic, ASAP, and uh, Danny Gangster probably have to just wield the uh, the USPs. Yeah, I think the one thing I'm a little bit disappointed there is that... Fair enough if you want to go for the retake in this scenario. I've got no issue with that whatsoever. But the problem I had was that we saw a player actually peek into like mini with a Mac 10 and another take a face elsewhere. And after they were still kind of in a 4v4 and the bomb wasn't even planted. So they kind of like took a risk that they were never going to win. Like if you're facing heaven with a Mac 10 from mini, if you get a kill, then I'm questioning what the player on the other side is doing. So just could have been a few moments of calm before they went for the retake, especially when they hadn't managed to gain any ground towards the Ven or even towards Mini itself. So if you rotate the AWP in there, you could have won that round. Even still, it's not the end of the world. 4-3, ground zero starting to build into this T-side once again. And as said, if, if they get a similar half to last time, I'm not going to be banking on the fact that they make the same mistakes. Well, they still have to face up with Chelios and his AWP. T trying to time that. Ooh, that second one is very close indeed. Chelios. Making that op look quite scary indeed. And I got to I gotta bring it back again to like what, he, what we spoke about earlier, Tom. As Chelios has been kind of like before we saw the likes of, uh, you know, Netic and ASAP step it up. Chelios was the hard carry for this team. Right? He was the guy who was making those moves, making the plays, top fragging for the side. And I know it's still early days. We've only seen them play against one team so far. And that was, of course, against Renegades. But like, for example, the miss towards Mini, that's something which... Shouldn't be happening. Not at this level, at the very least. Yeah, the, the one thing I will say, and th this is more just my personal preference when it comes to a lot of AWPers, but if, if your AWPer is your hard carry, right? The maps that they seem to play, or at least the maps they have played so far in this tournament, don't really go heavily in the favor of an AWPer. Like, you look at the maps that they played against Renegades, you have Inferno, which, granted, CT side AWPing, fairly common. T side, though bit rough like it's one that can be fairly tough it, it's not where i expect an orbit to hard carry you even look at the likes of someone like oscar right oscar is a player that i will only ever see with an orb in his hand except on nuke where he doesn't play it at all because it just doesn't really work for him now if i'm looking at orpa's maps okay mirage that fits more within that bracket you look maybe towards a train an overpass they played that the other day he did very well so i don't want to say like oh yeah no he's not having enough impact but i just don't, i think that a lot of the maps that they're currently playing I don't think you can expect an Orpa to always hard carry an Inferno or always hard carry a Nuke because it just it, it's tough to have that same sort of impact unless, for example, on Inferno, maybe you're Kenny S where you've been doing this for like eight years at this point and you just seem to be an absolute monster. But those are special cases a lot of the time.
True, have to agree. And of course, they haven't really had a chance to play one of their uh, the better maps, their favorite map, Mirage, which is actually going to be coming up next, and which exactly. is something I am very, very excited about. Llamas, enter trophy room, waiting for any aggression. We do have the buy coming in from for Rooster after uh, what feels like two rounds now where they've had to deal with pistols for the majority of the players, but at least Chelios and ADK have managed to keep on saving their uh, their rifle, so that's useful, but oh. Chelios Lace just drops oh. down like a wraith out of nowhere. There's no time to react and Chelios, well, he's had that up for three rounds, Tom, or maybe four rounds now, but he hasn't really been able to do much with it. Yeah, he almost seems to be playing it a little bit like how we see Henny play it, where he's trying to get aggressive into angles. The only thing is that like, Henny has some of the fastest reactions I think you'll ever see in Counter-Strike, so he can get away with no! things. What is this? How players are trying to take two battles at once. You could see, I think Llamas was watching towards the other player, ASAP. And, well, that was just almost too easy for Danny G. Like, that is a, a big mistake coming out from ground zero. Amara, three versus two. 35 seconds left on the clock. The bomb not even moving towards the site, it seems. Burn, are you okay? Seems to be trying to maybe pull a rotation. I'm, I'm unsure what the plan is here. Yeah, he's going to try and double back. And they have actually managed to do it. They've rotated players away from this site. And they are going to get an after plant, Blair. I like this. I really like that play from Burn, who... Is sitting on a bat double O six. Don't make it a double O seven. Get a kill. Get a kill. Oh, there we go. Avoids a double O seven, but Ooh. he will lose the round. He gets uh, one kill, seven deaths, but that's okay. As Rooster is strike back. That was a big mistake getting mowed down right there, and that was primarily because I think there was a massive gap in the smoke, so they had to check. Check towards the left-hand side, towards the towards the heavens position. At the same time, the timing was atrocious. Look at them. There was a big gap there. They had to take the fight. They were taking fight on two fronts, like you mentioned. ASAP just rattling off bullets from, I think, towards heaven or from hell. And then, of course, uh, a very, very comfortable spray down for Danny as well, down from the secret stairs. So a big, a big mistake from ground zero, because that, that was a round they should have won. They had the man advantage early on there. Well, yeah, and the worry so far is that ground zero... Okay, they got four rounds. Pretty good in a 5-4 scoreline. But the other thing as well is like... So we talk about Burn being that sort of exciting, aggressive player on this map. And then Maker was someone who we were sort of watching as like a highlight player. Now, granted, Llamas is having a fantastic start to this match, 13-6. and six. I think he's sort of ironed over some of the cracks that we're witnessing in this T side with a few slip-ups here and there. If it wasn't for him, I, th I think that we could be seeing Roosters fair bit further in the lead the worry for me though is to keep that sort of form up over a whole half or even into a second half it's going to be pretty rough like if so he's going to end with a 40 bomb at this rate so we'll, we'll have to wait and see whether or not he can continue that same sort of form or if we are going to see some of the other players step up because again like noobs is someone for me at least i don't know if you'd agree that for an orpa i haven't seen him have a whole lot of impact yet hmm I, I I I gotta agree. Like I feel like on a map like, uh, especially Nuke, right? CD side, AWP. It, it it's not exactly a map made for opping, but if you yeah. are going to be a primary op, but there's so many avenues available, right? You can single handedly be a problem towards RAM, towards outer, even go for this aggro picks uh, towards HUD, towards the T lobby area, and we didn't see much from him so far. But then again, it's T side T side Nuke opping. That's that's much harder, Tom. So I'm I'm just gonna. I'm just going to bite my time. You can carry it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Oh. oh, the timing. Yeah, I, I think Maker even knew that he was there. That that almost seems like a revenge battle being attempted. <laughs> like, I, I want to get him out. The thing is, they're really struggling with the duo of ASAP and Danny G outside. Like, that, they've been playing oh. off of each other. And just the goal of that man to go for that repeat, knowing that there was players on the other side. And he the, the Molotov coming out, so I guess the call-up did happen. He's inside for the smoke, but I still. I think he clipped the vent as well, though. Like, I think it's through the Lord. vent. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. The timing on that peak from... Uh... <sighs> I can't there feel was two. that. Okay, exactly. It was the, the next one he got, like where he peeks out again. <laughs> with a smoke from the, Look, this one. Like, what? Why? Why are you doing that? It's a 4v2. <laughs> then you, all you have to do... Oh, that's just uh, disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> now, all you had to do was just hold the angle, Tom. But uh, uh, this is where I get scared. This is where I get really scared. Oh, there we go. 
Look at the damage. One nade. One nade is all they need. Look at the help, Tom, and they're all still alive. This could go very badly wrong. Even though there's so many low HP players, Lam is going to attempt the wrap around. The rest of his team uh, are in the meantime going down towards that B site. This time, not so much of a rotation. We saw them over rotate last time, so I think there's a, a heavy hesitation to make sure they don't give anything up. Now, they've heard the scope at the top of the vent. That might give them a full sense of security, although there's no one even aware of it, but they go back and well, ADK this time is now waiting. So a scary situation, but ultimately, if they get away with three players alive, I don't think they're really going to care. And the wall bang isn't actually going to be met by anything. Nice cleanup from ADK. Ends up with a 4K. And Rooster now up to seven. Now, as said, the T side was, I, I would say, the shining light of Nuke for Ground Zero. Their CT side, again, started with a few rounds, but then they got absolutely battered. If this continues for Rooster, I don't think they're going to slow down on the T side. Like, I, I think that's something with this squad that is actually terrifying is that their CT side can sometimes be a bit questionable because of some of the plays we've just witnessed. Their T side, though, they're like a ball of death. They'll group up, they trade effectively, and they are a very scary team. They are indeed a suck. Oh. Wait, oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. That is so terrifying. Imagine you miss a shot and you're like, all right, I'll just get back towards mini and you just... I think he paused for a second. He's like, how is there, how is Lays there? Like, how is he even there this early in the round? I like, I, I do like it from ground zero though. That was uh, much more faster. Just catching, like, they know Rus is going to be continuing to aggress. And they're like, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to catch your aggression with even more aggression. Yeah, I think this is something that needs to be worked on, if anything, by the side of Roosters, is just like the... Be a bit more dynamic, I guess, by Because it's like, sure, go for these aggressive rounds, but have something in the mix to catch them off guard. Because if you're just doing it again and again and again, sure, it might work a fair few times, but eventually you're going to get caught, as we saw here, where there's a bit more split in the offense. Nice shot from ASAP. If they save the AWP, like Chelios will be able to drop two guns over and that will pretty much mean their buy is solid for the next round. So it, it wouldn't be too much of an issue for them. But yeah, I, I think they need to try and like throw in a few slightly more passive rounds with these hyper-aggressive ones because otherwise, Ground Zero are going to get some rounds for free. Yeah, that's what you want to avoid, right? And like you said, oh, look at just the pace from Lays. Yeah, there's no way Danny was expecting that. Two free kills and then ADK not expecting the players to just push out from Decon that quickly. Of course, they do have the money for the buy, uh, albeit, you know, FAMAS in the mix, pretty decent chunk of utility. And for the uh, for the T side, 5 AK-47 is a lot of utility. And Maker now, trying to sneak it through Never the buy. outside smoke. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> This uh, is why you throw in some slower rounds, because you know that they're going to have to check every single smoke that's ever been thrown. And I like this. This is a change from Chelios. He's been outside pretty much every single round. He's got to be careful, though. And in fact, after some noise has been made outside, it seems like he's maybe heard something that's given a bit of a false positive. ADK, though, I think he has a chance to actually catch the bomb. Oh, the timing. Oh, the timing. I would have preferred ADK just hold the line there, but anyway, he spots a bomb out and Maker getting the kill, but with a quick trade. Les trying to be cheeky this time around, but ASAP just turns around with the FAMAS, wins the duel, doesn't take a single point of damage, looking for more, and Noobs is going to find him, but the trades are quick, fast, and furious. Burn finds one, and now it's a 2v2. Up for bomb side control with the T side. Ground Zero, they're going to get the bomb down, planet for heaven. And the retake is definitely on as Danny Gangster and Chelios with the AWP. Yeah, there's a fair amount of time for them to rotate back in. And unlike their opponent's ground zero, they go for the retake pretty much every single time. It's not going too well, though. And Chelios is going to have to try and find both players. And with such a passive position for Llamas, I don't really see a way back into this round unless one of these shots connects. Oh, bit of a risky wide peek, but he gets away with it. Well, ground zero are now going to get up to six. Not a bad T side half. Of course, not quite as good as what we saw last time which evidently wasn't enough and as said like 
I, I think that they could genuinely win the second half again, and it still might not be enough if Roosters are able to recreate some of the T-side magic I saw last time I watched them. Well, an ultimate round, first half. Money looking a little grim for Rooster. So expecting a few pistols coming out, maybe you know, a couple of P-50s. I'd like to see a lobby crunch coming in from Rooster here. You know, try and keep Chelios holding towards outer with the AWP. Or maybe, you know, opening up Squeaky, just like holding that, holding that line while the rest of his teammate just pins her in from, uh, from ramp. You do see a couple of uh, upgraded pistols. Actually, everyone with the P-50, a 5-7. Will they go for any aggression? That remains to be seen. It's happening, but I would really like it if they kind of like grouped up together and went for it instead of just peeking in one by one, because nine times out of ten, the egg is going to win these duels. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll just say some seem to get away with these plays. Oh, only going to be the one. Not bad for Ground Zero. Seven and seven. They are bringing this back into their favor once again, and... The final buy is not going to be a bad one for Rooster. Of course, they'd like to go in with the victory of this second half. And as said, I, I hope that Ground Zero have sort of rectified some of the mistakes that we saw from the last half. Obviously, they haven't had any time really to do it, but maybe spotting out some of the things that went wrong when they played up against their opponents in the last. Even still, though, if they can go in with a eight round T side, I, I don't think we're going to be too critical of that. Well, eight rounds would be would be ideal for both the sides, right? And for Ground Zero, hopefully they have managed to do a little bit of soul searching. Aggression comes out final round the first half. This is much better for Bruce. This is what I've been wanting to see all this while. Aggression is great when you work in tandem. At least it's always a trade potential. This time around, they get the kill and they get the hell out of that hell out of there ASAP. As Danny Gangster once again, he loves holding his outer yard. And this time around, he's just going to stick. He's not going to do anything. That Molotov, that's a giveaway. He knows exactly where the player is and Maker not expecting the position. This is so much better from, from Rooster. Look at, look at how they're poking and prodding. Oh, it's brilliant stuff. They have to check everything. This is the problem. Ground Zero, there is no corner that is safe on this map from the Roosters. It, it is literally like the chickens you see on Inferno. They're just going to wander around. And uh, eventually, you're going to bump into one of them, plucking away. Now, Lays 1 versus 4, turn 3. The AWP in his hand. So many angles to check. He's actually going to try and switch this up. Get an afterplant position on the B site. The problem is there is a player already rotating in, but he doesn't actually catch him. Ops to try and take the fight as a closed plant here would be a horrible position to try and defend from. And with the amount of time that has been bought just by the presence of his opponent up the top of ramp, I think that's going to be enough to end this round. I don't know how he gets out of this. We're going to need to see some sicko magic, and there's the first one. He has spotted the second player around the double doors as well, but he's only got 10 seconds left and they know this. They're trying to wait for him to go for the plant and this is all over. Yeah, that was so perfectly played as well. They knew they were keeping an eye on the clock. 10 seconds, they, he fakes the plant and six seconds remaining, they know he's got to either commit or he's got to take the fight and they peek him together. And th that was a very well played round coming out from Rooster, if you ask me. Like that final round, that's the sort of aggression which I like to see instead of just you know, holding W, solo, just going on in. And sometimes when you kind of restrain yourself a little bit, especially on a CD side, your opponents, they have to make the move. They have to go for the plays. And that's when they fall into the trap you've kind of set for them. So 8-7, to seven, the scoreline rooster going into the second half with the one-round lead. For ground zero, this is a big question mark, Tom. I don't know. We did not see anything from them on their CD side against downfall. Can they reverse that? I don't think they would have picked into this map again if they didn't think that it was going to be something they could rectify. So I'm not as worried for Ground Zero. It, it's just whether or not they can actually battle versus the T side of the Roosters and whether or not they have the same sort of pizzazz. Interestingly, two of their players have not bought anything. Is that correct? The new oh. strat. One that I don't think I've seen before. <laughs> okay. Um, Save him for the AKs in the next round. All right, Burn. All right. Progressing further. And finally gets punished for it. But now Maker's going to strike as well as Noobsa joins the party, leaving it all in the pretty capable hands of Danny Gangster. He's going to head straight down the vents. He might be able to get the bomb down here. He should. He's got a smoke as well to cross on over. So at least to get a bomb down. However, 
Touching this one might be a little bit impossible. They know exactly where he is. Trapped behind the smoke and Llama just spamming away. Gets to kill and that's going to be ground zero. Winning the pistol round. They're going to tie things up. Do you, do you actually think they might have just not bought so they could get more in this next round? Because like, if you look at the money, ASAP can realistically buy an AK or Galil. Obviously no head armor. Danny G can just buy an AK, which he has done, by the way. If that was the plan, I will say, just as a, a slight caveat, I, I do hate them for that. <laughs> because that, that is if we're talking about exploiting bugs it might not be a bug as it is the economy of this game but i definitely call that exploitation not buying anything in the first round to just slam them into the ground in the second uh it would be impressive if this now works which it very well could because they have come into this with three rifles i'm gonna feel dirty well i'm gonna feel disgusted yeah i mean uh... I mean, we can do the good old game of, hey, guess which team uh, won the won the pistol round, right? Galil, AK, Chelios with the scout. He really does like to scope weapons. Uh, much comparatively kind of quiet on the CD side, won't lie, with the with the sniper uh, with, with the sniper rifle, scout or AWP. As he's able to convert something over here. Lamas with the smoke, keeping the T's at bay for the time being. ASAP already down to 18 points of health. They have a couple of smokes, three smokes in total. A couple of flashes and a smoke. So they do have some something to work with here. They could potentially use the smokes to head over towards out or cross on towards outer yard. Make their way towards uh, lower. Use the remaining smoke to try and kind of uh, enter the lower bomb side. But first they have to face off against Burn. Are you okay? Who uh, had a nice pistol round. He's going to do more here, though. Natic's going to get the opening kill. Noobster will fall. Uh, it's starting to slip away from them. They did a lot of damage in the early portions of this one, but... It is going to be... Bomb now getting planted, and... Well, we've already seen how bad... Ground Zero guys are in after plant positions. ASAP again. He's having a phenomenal match. He was on 18 HP from the very beginning of this round and now has just managed to get a tasty double and upgrade to an M4 and Llamas is going to have to just save. As said, Blair, I do now feel a little bit disgusted by the fact that they actually managed to win themselves that round because that is, uh, well, that's grotesque if they did, if they saved. Because that's the thing, like if it was just like a mistake where two of them didn't buy, which I don't really know how that could happen. But if it was, let's just say give them the benefit of the doubt, then obviously it's just more the economy of Counter-Strike, the fact that they can come in with a better buy. But a part of me thinks that they did that intentionally, and dear lord, that's not something I, I think I ever want to see again. Unfortunately, what this leaves is that the CT side are now going to have to kind of go for their own force buy here. It's not going to be a particularly pretty one. They're going to be left with uh, some problems with their finances, to say the least. And if they lose this next round, this is pretty much as bad a start you can get to the second half. I was I just I just, I just muted myself on the on the VMix call. Which is kind of unfortunate. Uh but we do have of course uh a full ego this time around, Tom. And I can finally hear you on TeamSpeak, by the way. You were sounding robotic all this oh. while, but now I can... Oh, no. I ruined it. I jinxed it. You sound like a robot again. <laughs> I'll try So restart. whatever you're saying, I can kind of like... Kind of like gauge, have an idea what you're saying. At the same time, I, I, I'm I not very sure like what, what you're really saying. You're just like winging it. But uh, 
You know what? Doesn't really matter. Right now, the Rooster, they're looking very solid indeed. USB stacked towards outside. Chalios and Danny and ASAP, they're going to have no trouble whatsoever just mowing the players down. This is very, very good. Two rounds back to back if Rooster are able to do it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to win two rounds back to back without losing a single player. And that means their money is starting to spiral a little bit out of control. Three players at $9,000. ASAP almost in 10K. Netic and Chelios on average about 7K as well. It's looking very, very good for the Rooster side. And Ground Zero, well, they had a nightmare of a CD side earlier in their, uh, in their first game against Downfall. And uh, they were leading 9-1 up. For those of you who didn't tune in for that game, they were leading 9-1 up on the T side of Nuke. And then they lost 16-13. They were 13-7 up at one point, and the CD side just completely, utterly fell flat. And we were hoping, and when you saw this new pick coming in, Tom, like, we did have the discussion. We are like, you know, could this potentially be a mistake? Because the CD side was very flat, and right now... True, a couple of these rounds have been four spies and pistol rounds, but... Rooster, they, they're, they're finding holes in his defense. They're winning their duels, and this, this sheer, consistent aggression, it's... it's Seems to be a little bit too much for Ground Zero to really contend with. As noobs are all, oh, just goes for a slow peek out, and Netic is ready and waiting, and the number of opening kills Netic's gone has got so far isn't quite ludicrous. Danny being sneaky in the smoke. His cross run over. He should get a trade here. Maker not expecting Danny's position, and Danny looking for more of a burn will drop him, and finally, something looking good. At least something. Looking finally much better for the CD side. ASAP's going to be left alone in a 1v2. Burn on 14 points of health. This is... It's 7 HP, but this is winnable. He's going to get the bomb down. He's going to wait. He's going to bide his time. He's going to try and find the first player. He knows the player up above. What's heavens? And he's not going to bother checking. And it's going to be burned from above. He's going to get the kill. That indeed is going to be, well, a hard-fought run for ground zero. And every round right now matters. ASAP, 23 kills. That is just pure filth. 12 deaths for him. Danny, gangster on 19. Chelios, 80k. Kind of quiet. Netic's just on 12. But the thing is, so many opening kills so far on his T side has gone has come because of Netic. Just opening things up with a kill with an AK-47 doesn't really matter. As we do have Droney McDrone face. Coming in. ASAP, he's got no face. He's just a wraith. He's a shadow. But he's also the photographer. As we do have Tom jumping back in. How's your mic sounding now, Tom? It's not good now. Yeah. Anything changed, but... <laughs> it, it, it happened to me yesterday. Don't worry about it. <laughs> ASAP's just completely... ASAP and Netic. Like, Netic obviously doesn't have the, uh, the kills that ASAP has, but he's been getting some nutty opening kills. Well, ASAP has just been dismantling ground zero every opportunity he gets so so far ground zero they won a hard fought round but again they had to they lost three players and money's looking grim and now rooster 5v3 this is not looking good at all for ground zero yeah it almost seems again just like the t's can get away with whatever they want like they're, they're able to push out the squeaky door get towards the vent they're they're just able to do so much with so little space that's that well that's what it should be the case at least like Outside somewhere you can challenge for, but the A site's normally somewhere where if you push in there, you're met with nades, you're met with molotovs, you're met with players, and instead they're able to get away with so much. And the remaining two, well, they're just going to try and get a little bit more aggressive. It doesn't really matter. The bomb's going down on the B site again. While all this was going on, the rest of the team have been able to rotate through to B. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to witness the similar things or the similar problems that we saw last time from ground zero and this time it's not even like they're being like too over aggressive or like taking big risks they're just unable to gain map control without being shot in the face yeah it's it's kind of like a little bit of deja vu here although the difference here and it's actually uh even worse if you think about it rooster actually do have the lead right unlike the previous game where ground zero had a massive lead 9-1 and later on 13-7 and it kind of crafted away this time around they don't have that that luxury where they could be like all right guys screw it just gonna go for an aggro push yolo you can't do that because you don't have the rounds to work with and if that's around that breaks your economy well rooster just gonna run away with look at the cash they have in the bank tom that's so much money to work with. And that is on the T side, and that is after we've already gone for the buy. 11k on ASAP. 
Netic and ADK an average of 9,000. Danny on almost 6,000. Chelios on 4K. That's money for days to work with. And they're just four rounds away from taking map number one. Yeah, th this is a rough one. Danny is continuing to just cause them problems. And while well, Burn by name, Burn by nature, he's out of the round to a Molotov already. This is similar to what we've witnessed so far. Obviously, this round is forgivable. This is a round where they've gone for a gamble stack. They've taken some risks and well so far not so good right yep as we do have uh well it's pretty much a safe round here but losing to the ak at least you can hold on to it and danny oh yeah doesn't spot him yet uh it's right above you yeah he sees it oh he sees all them what no nope, doesn't get anything <laughs> oh no oh that's rough that's one of those rounds where you're like, I can get two here. And then you're like doing the calculation in your head and then you just screw up both. It, it happens. They're actually making this one relatively costly, of course, at this point of the game. Uh, as, as The Rock once said, it, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just, it's completely pointless. It, it Even if you get like three, four kills for the next few rounds, it's still going to be money in the bank. So if anything, for ground zero... Either Laze needs to win this, which I'm going to be honest, Blair, I don't think that's going to happen, or he needs to just scurry away and save his gun. Ooh, nice shot there. But, yep, Yop will not be set. I don't actually like him for him to run away with him, you know, head towards. Although, if he ran towards Secret, they would have heard him, they would have hunted him down. There's no escape from that. Like, he, he wasn't, he didn't have much health to work with either. So, if he got any more closer to the bomb side, he would have been taken down anyway to the to the bomb explosion. So, a bit of damage being dealt. It's, 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 a, it's a very small little positive i don't think it's really going to matter because they have so much money to work with to do rooster and for ground zero they're running out of time they're running out of time tom it's their map pick map number two is going to be mirage a map that rooster are very very comfortable on and oh boy got a feel for ground zero imagine being an invited team and getting being also being the first team to get knocked out of the tournament I, th I think the damage they did in the last round could be comparison to being lost in the middle of the ocean, but at least it's not raining. Like, ultimately, you're still wet. It's, no, it's not going well. They're really in trouble here. And Danny G again. This is like two, three, maybe four rounds. He's managed to just be cheeky, get into a position that he shouldn't have done and find an opening pick. They managed to turn this quickly from a 5v4 into, well, now a 3v3, thanks to Maker, who has had a rough one, I think it's fair to say. It's not been the same performance that we saw from him earlier. He's going to try and get a little bit more aggressive, and he's met with a dink. Very, very lucky to be alive. And ASAP, in the meantime, has also found a pick elsewhere. It's just not going to happen. Danny G with another, and it's left all onto Llamas. He's not had a bad game. 20 kills, but remember, I, I said it early on. I think it was like five, six rounds in. He had 13 kills. He slowed down quite significantly. He is going to get up a double, but then he oh. cooks. It's the martyrdom from ASAP and 14 on the ball for Rooster. I, I, I genuinely kind of feel bad for Ground Zero, honestly. I mean, nothing against Rooster. Like, they're, Danny G is... He, he He's a G right now alongside ASAP. And just more, how many kills has he got from this position, Tom? Like, just in that squeaky area and ASAP just getting kills at will. And they're really popping up, which is great. You know, this is a team who many people say are right below Avant, Order, and Renegades. And, you know, right that right above Chiefs, you know, potential top four team. And they're kind oh, of God's playing sake. like it. <laughs> How many kills is he going to get? Uh, it's like ASAP's just entering, and then Danny G just somehow gets They've into left position. The They've left the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Rooster. It's an objective-based game. <laughs> it's not that much. Oh my god. What's the bet they win this round without retrieving the bomb? Just kill everyone? Yeah, I, I reckon it's high. I, I think that I think that they are gonna win this round just by killing everyone. I, I think they won't even need the bomb in the end. They have the guns. So yeah, maker should be careful. Burn finds okay. ADK. You're jinxing it. ASAP may not be expecting this angle. The timing is brilliant, but the aim punch comes in. ASAP barely gets tickled, actually. Chelios finds Lace. And now Llamas with a spray. That was his opportunity. And he will have to peel away as Chelios finds Burn. And you're right, Tom. They do retrieve the bomb, though. And Chelios still looking for the kill. The guy is a lunatic.
an ASAP triple kill to finish it off. The guy's gonna, I think he must be close to 30 bomb by now. Yep, 30 bomb. Oh, bang 30 on. Kills. <laughs> bang on. 30 kills. He has just been unstoppable. Danny has been a problem and ground zero. Huh. This is sort of what I spoke about in the first half. Like, I think, again, we're seeing the weaknesses of Ground Zero CT side, but at the same time, Rooster are strong on the T side. You're seeing the confidence of ASAP, but it's not like he's been the be-all and end-all when it comes to their T side. I think mm -hmm. Danny G has had huge amounts of impact. Like, you even just look at like the ADR statistics, they're really not that far apart. And those two players have been the difference. Again, you've still got Lays, you've still got Llamas. It's not like they're having... Bad games. The problem is elsewhere. Noobster mentioned him saying that, okay, maybe on T-side or ping it's forgivable. He's had next to no impact in this match, and he's not the only one. He is indeed. And uh, yeah, like one player who's impressed me a lot, like, uh, you know, just looking at the, the silver lining here for Ground Zero Lays has been fantastic. He has been really, really good. Maker as well, although. He has been comparatively a little quiet so far in this game, but he's been phenomenal so far. Even in a losing effort, he was great. The Leas and Maker, the new pickups have really shown up. Llamas as well. Over here, like you pointed out, both of them are sitting on 20 kills. But it's not about the kills. It's just the fact that they're losing the bomb sites. They're not able to counter this aggression. Here comes a play again, working like a pack of wolves, just striking. At the same time, the trades are very good, but the trades are actually favoring Ground Zero for a change. It's a 3v2. Chelios and ADK still alive. And with two SG... What?! Blech. Why Why do they have two SGs, Tom? Like, one, I can kind of see, you know, for the memes for all time's sake, but two? See, Chelios, I, I don't think he likes using any gun that doesn't have a scope. I, 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 it's, there's, <laughs> there's a, it's just, there's a few players like this where it's like, I maybe don't have the best spray in the world. I don't know. But he seems to either pick up an SG or a scout when he can't afford the AWP, so... Eh, fair enough. But uh, yeah, having two is a little bit weird. It, it's a gun that's very situational nowadays. I, I feel like you can still get it to work on train just mm -hmm. because every battle you take on train, unless you're going towards pop and maybe Ivy, are going to be like long range battles. So there I can see the capabilities of it. But when it comes to most maps, you're only going to need one because it's very, very situational. But that's kind of how it should be, really. I, I think it's much more balanced for the gun where I, I don't want to see it take over again i, I agree I, I still feel like maybe a couple of change uh, like one change would make it a little bit extra viable like a little bit tad one bit, change could could Break send the whole well. gun into turmoil i'm happy where it is <laughs> yeah and, 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 <laughs> leave I, it there I, I personally feel like the aug is in a perfect place like the aug right now is in a beautiful place <laughs> and he's just comes sliding down like uh like a clown from it and burn are you okay we'll get the trade so well ground zero they have uh, to win five in a row. They needed to win six in a row. Now they've at least uh, got the first one. Now five in a row right now. It, it's doable. CD side nuke, it's doable. But based off what we've seen so far in the past few hours, they haven't really uh, shown much to really, you know, uh, have us put some faith in them. Yeah, it, it just feels like we're waiting for the inevitable. Like eventually someone like Danny G is going to get away with something or ASAP's going to get another double kill. It's like, I, I don't, well, we've, we've watched now two CT sides of this map just go wrong for Ground Zero. So unless they're going to like finally find that missing piece, the elixir of life that's just going to change everything. Maybe it's Llamas. Again, as said, he's had a very good game. Oh. But he is going to eventually die. Chelios with that AWP. He's not quite quick enough this time as Burn will be there to put him down. Bomb Plant will confirm their money for the next round. And Netic. Can I attempt this one versus four? Uh, chances are slim, especially with the amount of sound he's making, positions being given away as he'll go for the face. No surprise why. And eventually it will be the defusal coming in. So Ground Zero, they're at least starting to make some ground, but uh, they've still got a long way to go. Four more in a row needed. Yeah, there's a big round for Burn as well. He's had a very quiet series, a pretty quiet day so far, but nice 3k there to keep his team in the map. Those of you just tuning in, again, uh, map pick from Ground Zero. Next one's coming up is going to be Mirage. And the third one, if we do go to it, it's going to be Surprise, Surprise, Inferno. I'm just excited for Mirage, Tom. Like I'm like, yes, a different map, which isn't Nuke, isn't Inferno, and isn't Vertigo. To be honest, I wouldn't have minded Vertigo either, but a little bit of a switch up. I like that. 
Danny G. Running out like a madman. And again! Again, Tom! Find themselves yeah. inside of vents. It reminds <laughs> me of how Madden plays on this map. Like, he just will do the same thing again and again and again and again. And unfortunately, at times, it feels impossible to stop. Chelios, he's got his AWP back in hand. They're going to do the jump over to force Noobster off the angle. Oh, no. Again, he's not been performing well, and he's going to get shut down. Chelios finally coming up with a round that might just be enough to close it as Natic is there alongside him. It's left onto Llamas. Burn, are you okay? And I think the answer at this point has to be no. It's left all onto Llamas. Oh, it's really awkward, but eventually they'll kill him off. It's 16 to 11. Roosters show their dominance coming in on that T side.